Hello, Charlie Redding from Efficient Portfolio here, and welcome to the next uh, version of the client case study. So in each one of these videos, I just want to spend a few minutes giving an example of how we've helped a client in case it kind of jogs a memory or kind of inspires you to think, oh, actually, that's a way that we could help this one of our clients. And maybe you can then introduce them to us and then we can we can help them in a similar way. So in this particular one, I want to talk about a client that um, came to us in the lead up to retirement. Now, he was actually being forced to retire earlier than he'd expected to. He was a partner in a firm, but he wasn't the senior partner and the senior partner decided that it was time for him to retire. Uh, and so retirement was being forced upon him much earlier than he expected, but he was still in his mid sixties. So therefore it was difficult for him to go out and work, find another job. But it was something that he was weighing up when he was introduced to us. And when he was introduced to us, he was, he was actually really distraught because he thought he'd probably got another three years of working, which was going to get him to where he thought he needed to be so that he could afford to retire in the way that he'd promised his wife and his family. Um, you know, he'd got, uh, one of his children was living abroad and he wanted to be able to spend a fair chunk of time um, him and his wife in that country with their, with their, their um, child. Um, and so uh, and he promised his wife a new kitchen and they didn't want to leave the house that they were living in because they very much loved living there. So he felt like he had really failed his family because he was being forced to retire at a time when he actually hadn't accumulated all the money that he had expected to. And he'd got about £500,000 in pensions and investments and cash when, when he was being introduced to us. He'd got an investment property. And really his only focus was how can I create a sustainable retirement from, from, this, um, from these assets? And so what we did to start with was we looked at his existing investments uh, to see how, whether they were doing a good job. And you can see that this blue line on here was his current investments and the, the green and the red line were uh, what he would have achieved had he um, managed the money with the discretionary investment manager that we um, would have recommended uh, uh, had he come to us a few years prior. So he was missing out on some significant investment returns for the money outside of his pensions. For the money inside of his pensions, again, he was missing out, again, this orange line shows the performance he was receiving. So he was missing out on quite a lot of returns. I mean, you can see here that, and what we found was that actually he was taking more risk than he was comfortable with. So for the same level of risk, as he'd currently been experiencing, he was missing out on somewhere in the order of um, 15, uh, sorry, uh, what's that? Uh, five, so about nearly, well, just short of 10, probably 8% growth. Um, so from a performance point of view, he wasn't getting his money working as hard for him as he possibly could. What we then started to do was talk to him about why, why he felt like he was letting his family down, why he couldn't generate the, the retirement he wanted to. And what he'd been doing is he'd been looking, this was um, uh, a few years ago, so he'd been looking at buying an annuity. And the income that he was going to be able to generate from an annuity was very low. And whilst actually we found that if we used the best annuity on the market, looking at his cash flow forecast, this shows the amount of income that would be available each year and the black line is his expenditure. He was actually on track to, even if he lived to age 100, to still have enough money. So he was, he was making it out the situation to be worse than it actually is. And this is because he, it's really difficult at retirement to quantify, well, how much money have I got and how much is it going to last me and how much income can I draw from it? And we actually found that he had a, he had a relatively uh, modest existence uh, and so to retire in the way that he wanted to, um, even with a couple of capital expenditures early on, he could actually afford um, to do that, even on, on, on an annuity and leaving the money in cash and in the current underperforming investment. But what he would have done is got rid of his entire pension uh, because uh, of, you know, when you buy an annuity, you basically hand over that pension. So what we were able to do was say, well, actually, let's, let's change this a little bit and let's think about drawdown as a better option. We were able to increase the amount of income that he could draw out uh, using drawdown while still making sure there was enough to reach age 100. But actually, in addition to that, even though he was drawing out that slightly higher level of income, he was actually getting to a position where even in today's money, 
at age 100, he still had 300,000 pounds in investments and savings. So actually he had more than enough money to be able to retire. And so what we were then able to do is to say, well, okay, what if we factor in an extra 10,000 pounds a year for those first sort of 10 years of retirement um, so that you can afford to go and spend more time abroad? And actually, that was still more than comfortably uh, achieved uh, with showing the cash flow forecast. So even if there was a market downturn, there was still likely to be um, enough money for him to achieve that. And so actually, this was really a problem where the client had uh, didn't understand the value of the assets. They'd got, they'd got the investment property, they'd got the pension, they'd got the investments in the ISA. First, you would need to make the investments and pensions work harder for them so that you can actually generate better returns and therefore generate more income. But also, it was just about understanding how he could draw that money out of the pension through drawdown. And so really, that's what we did was we kind of got his ISAs and investments working harder for him. We used drawdown to facilitate his income in retirement, which not only will give him more flexibility to increase and decrease his income, but it will also mean that if we're him and his wife to not survive to as far as 100, then actually there's a pot of money left to be inherited by the children. We were able to make sure that we preserved the money in that pension that much better by using an asset preservation trust. Uh, so that's a trust where we leave the pension to on death to make sure that it passes down to the next generation in the most tax efficient and most protected way possible. And we were also able to introduce what we call the beneficiary protection trust, which is where uh, he leaves assets through his will into that trust so that uh, so if his uh, daughter or son were to marry the son or daughter-in-law from hell and then get divorced, we've managed to ring fence those assets and make sure that they do pass down to the next generation rather than being lost to um, creditors um, further down the line. So that's just an example of how we helped to put a client that was in the lead up to retirement that was really worried they didn't have enough money to retire on and that actually when we looked at it from a different perspective and looked at some of the options he had, he actually had more than enough money to be able to retire in what was the right retirement for him. So if you know anybody that's in a similar situation that's approaching retirement, it really is a powerful time to use lifetime cash flow forecasting to help them understand whether they've got sufficient money. And if they haven't, it allows us to identify the strategies that will allow us to allow them to make sure that they do have, or they can make some different decisions around um, what they're you know, making the right, uh, giving them the best financial future possible. So if we can help, please just drop us an email, pick up the phone to us. We'd love to uh, help you with any of your clients. Uh, I hope that you, hopefully this gives you an insight into a little bit of the work that we're doing.